Many IT corporations install servers that are only functioning at a fraction of their capacity. Often because physical server is dedicated to a certain purpose. This is typically an inefficient technique since there is surplus capacity being wasted every day. Imagine you buying a gaming laptop and just editing Google documents on it. This doesn't make sense, right? The same thing prevails when companies don't utilize server completely. And doing so, they pay higher operating and IT cost since they are not utilizing the resources completely. And to solve this problem of lower capacity utilization and higher cost, the concept of virtualization was introduced. With this session, we are going to delve over the intricacies of this concept and how it works. But before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you never miss any update from IntelliPath's YouTube channel. The concepts that we are going to touch upon with this session are what is virtualization. Then we will discover hypervisor and its types. And after that, we'll delve over the details of what is Hyper-V and advantages of using Hyper-V, which is a tool developed by Microsoft. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So without wasting any time, let's get started with our first topic, what is virtualization? Meet Joel. He works as a software developer in an IT firm. Usually, he works on multiple projects and is very passionate about his work. Often. The projects he get allotted with make him use a plethora of operating systems. However, while using multiple operating systems, he came across cases where the managing of data becomes very problematic due to compatibility issues with these different operating systems. This problem further leads to the delay in software product delivery, which further reduces the value of Joel's firm in market. After thorough research, Joel found the solution to this issue. He started employing virtualization to formulate data synchronization between different operating systems. But what exactly is this virtualization and how does it solve the hurdle faced by Joel and his organization? Let's take a close look at this concept. See, virtualization is nothing but utilizing a software to create a virtual layer over the hardware, which allows the system hardware to be utilized more efficiently and allows the appropriate return for the hardware cost. It is like you'll have access to software without installing it on your device. You can think of it as a video played on YouTube. So the video is on YouTube, but you can enjoy it with the help of internet or any other device, whether it is mobile or laptop without even downloading it. In the same way, software will be set up on some high end server and it will be used by you like a local software and with the help of network. This will enable convenience, less costing and optimal resource utilization. The software that makes virtualization possible is known as hypervisor. Hypervisors allow elements of the system such as storage, memory, processor, etc. to be distributed among multiple separate and secure virtually built components or machines per se. By book, we call them virtual machines or VMs. To understand this theory in detail, let me show you a sample simulation of virtualization. The system that you are able to see on your screen is running Windows as an operating system. Since we are looking to virtualize this system, it will be termed as host system and Windows OS will be termed as host operating system. Basically, the virtualization software that is hypervisor will be installed over this host operating system or directly over the hardware. And then, Using this piece of software, we can have multiple instances of different operating systems such as Linux, Mac or Debian. All these virtual instances will be termed as virtual systems or guest operating systems. This phenomenal access to uninstalled softwares with the same convenience, speed and optimal utilization is only possible because of software known as hypervisor. Moving forward. We'll look into the intricacies of this hypervisor and its types. Hypervisor is a software layer like we discussed till the time, which completely manages or overlooks virtual machines. What it does is it implements the interface between both the physical system and virtual machines, which ensures the proper crossing of resources. It also manages the virtual machine instances so that they don't interfere with one another's resources. Now let's uncover different types of hypervisor. There are basically two major types of hypervisors. The first one is type 1 hypervisor 
and second one which you probably must have guessed by now is type 2 hypervisor. The type 1 hypervisor is the one which directly interacts with the hardware system and user resources. It won't be mounted over any other software, hence it will be automatically prone to cyber attacks and threats. Basically, this software is installed where the host operating system is installed. That's the reason why it is also called as bare metal hypervisor. Now let's move to the type 2 hypervisor. This type 2 hypervisor software will actually run as an application on host operating system. That's why it is also known as hosted hypervisor. The downside of hosted hypervisors is that they have higher latency than bare metal hypervisors. This is due to the fact that communication between the hardware and hypervisor must go via additional layer of software that is host operating system. Hosted hypervisors are sometimes also known as client hypervisors since they are typically utilized with end users and software testing when increased latency is less of concern. I hope these basic details of hypervisor are clear to all of you guys. Now moving forward, we'll discuss about hypervisor developed by Microsoft famously known as Hyper-V. Microsoft Hyper-V is nothing but the hypervisor developed by Microsoft. To be specific, it is bare metal or type 1 hypervisor. When Microsoft Hyper-V debuted in 2008, virtualization was just beginning to become mainstream. Nobody knew what it was and even fewer knew what they could do with it. Everything appeared theoretically hard, risky and difficult to implement and preserve. However, with these few years, all of these concerns have been washed off the shore by incredible technology. Virtualization is now ubiquitous. It's important for every aspect of IT industry. Nowadays, data centers are built around the notion of virtualization. Developers heavily depend on it to develop software products, carrying out different processes on different operating systems. The whole concept of cloud computing, which is becoming a buzzword in IT industry nowadays, has evolved from this very concept of virtualization. And Microsoft's product Hyper-V has definitely helped evolve this technology in tandem with the increased interest. Microsoft Hyper-V is an extensively used tool in modern age and is gaining ground on VMware ESXi, which is the industry trailblazer in corporate virtualization now. Beginning with Windows 8 and now with Hyper-V Windows 10 and 11, Hyper-V is built-in component of the professional and enterprise editions of Windows desktop operating systems. This offering is a subset of server-based Microsoft Hyper-V technology. It's a type 1 hypervisor installed besides the Windows operating system. Hyper-V can only create virtual machines on x86 or x64 systems running Windows. A server computer running Hyper-V can be configured to expose individual virtual machines to one or more networks. Let's look at a few benefits of Hyper-V software. One of the key reasons enterprises use Hyper-V is its low cost. The core Hyper-V tools are free with enterprise agreement. You'll have to pay for more complex Hyper-V functionalities and license, but Hyper-V still has a pricing advantage over its competitors. When you analyze the parallels between Hyper-V and its main competition VMware, it becomes even more appealing. Because Hyper-V is a stable, cost-effective choice. Many firms have been rapidly adopting it, contributing to a recent increase in Hyper-V's overall market share. You can also implement a virtual switch using Hyper-V's free of charge. A virtual switch enables all of your VMs to connect with one another, making it an essential component of virtual networking. Virtual switches are intelligent, meaning they inspect data packets before routing communication. The capability to configure traffic in this way improves security within your virtual environment. So this is a crucial benefit that Hyper-V has to offer. The next benefit on our list says that Hyper-V simplifies live migrations. This feature allows you to move running VMs from one Hyper-V host to another without any downtime. Live migrations are simple and promote continuous operation of your network. With Hyper-V, you can develop and test applications, operating systems and upgrades. The ease of creating VMs in Hyper-V and the fact that VMs can remain separate from the rest of your system makes them perfect environment for testing. You can also create a virtual lab or experiment with different operating systems 
and see how your application performs on each without using more than one computer. When you are done with experimenting, you can simply delete the virtual machine and there are many more such features Hyper-V has to offer. However, the differences we just looked into provide it with a competitive edge over other competitors. With this, we have come to the end of this session on what is virtualization and Hyper-V. We hope that this session was informative and interesting. If you have any queries regarding this session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Our team of experts will be delighted to resolve all your queries. Until next time and hit that subscribe button to come across more such technical videos from IntelliPath. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cloud computing, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification on cloud and DevOps by IIT Madras. This course is taught by industry experts and IIT Madras faculty. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.